thanks everybody for joining us. This is just our second Monday Masterclass. Scott and I spent a little time. We think we're ready to go, right, Scott? Yes, sir. I think so. So we got a couple things planned for you today. Today, the topic is, you know, how to handle these discovery sticky notes with panache. You know, I don't even know why I came up with that network. I never use that word, but it means with style, with confidence, with a little bit of flair. Uh -huh. And a lot of it is just really getting to use it, right, Scott, and thinking yeah. about some of the things we're going to cover. Yep. Scott's, Scott's a panache kind of guy, aren't you, Scott? <laughs> I use the word all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do this. We're going to, as we have been begun to do, what we're doing is, I think there's still a couple people in the waiting room. Good. Yeah. Uh, so what we'll do is the first half hour, roughly, will be Scott and I sharing some things with you. The second half hour will be your questions. Now, we haven't really practiced our first half hour. It may go a little longer, may go a little shorter. Uh, but what we're going to do is keep that first half hour very informal. So if you want to just jump right in and ask a question or have an observation right while we're in that first half hour, please do it. We're going to keep it very, very informal. Now, the first half hour, we're going to roughly divide that up. First, we're going to go into the Blue Help section. And if you haven't spent a lot of time in the Blue Help, and by the way, Blue Help is very new. We just, just developed it this year. We really want to start getting you comfortable with Blue Help so you can get in there. Uh, There's a lot. And I'm going to go to three articles in Blue Help that are on this topic. But if we spent the whole time doing that, that wouldn't be a lot of fun. So I think what we'll do then is Scott and I will go over to an hey, actual. Uh oh, you want to mute maybe somebody there, Scott? I got it. Okay, cool. Uh, so, at any rate, uh, what we'll do is Scott and I'll go to a discovery interview. And then we will go ahead and uh, show you some of Scott and Dan's favorite uh, panache tricks uh, in discovery interviews. So let's do this. Uh, I think you guys can, uh, let me, let me yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So when you go to the Blueprinting Center, remember, this is where you go for everything on Blueprinting, everything. Uh, so what I'm going to do is first go to Blue Tools, because if you're talking discovery interviews, the one thing you always want to have in your hands is a discovery interview quick start card. So we're going to go to Blue Tools here. And when we get to Blue Tools, we're going to conduct a discovery interview. So we click that. And then just click Discovery Interview Quick Start Card in your preferred language, OK? My preferred language happens to be English. So that's what we're going to use today. And so we've got that guy pulled up there so we can use this as we go through this. We're not going to use the front side a lot. This is before the interview to remind you of things. But we are going to be going to this back side here, and we're going to be talking about side two, which is something you can put up on the screen when you're doing a discovery interview, virtually or in person. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Now, back to the uh, back to the blueprinting center. Now, let's go to the blue help section, and I would strongly encourage you to go here for all kinds of uh, of resources. Uh, if you wanted to conduct discovery interviews, you could put in a search term here. And let me just go ahead and put in the word interview. Okay, there we go. And now you'll see we've got um, how to conduct web conference, face to face, all kinds of things for, discover for conducting discovery interviews. Now, what I'm going to do today is instead of going in here, and, uh, and diving in this way. Let me show you the other way of finding things in the Blue Help section. And that is simply to come down here, ignore Minesweeper, that's not blueprinting. Everything else in here is about blueprinting. And so click on Discovery Interviews. <clears throat> and over on the left, you're going to see this big menu here, uh, over here of all the topics. And I'm also scrolling down these topics here. And when we get to how to conduct discovery interviews, that's the one that we're going to spend some time on. So we're going to go fairly quickly through three articles here. We're not going to read them to you. You can do that on your own. But I'd like you to know what's in these articles. Then we're going to swing over to an actual discovery interview or maybe a demo one. And Scott and I will share some of our favorite tips. The way this Blue Help works is whatever is over here, these major categories, you can see over here. So I could click on how to conduct a discovery interview here. 
But there's also lots of other stuff. If I keep scrolling down, you can see there's just a ton of stuff here. After a while, over on the left side, it starts, it starts scrolling as well. So I just want you to know there's a bunch in here. So do some searching, look for whatever you want, and take advantage of this. Now, let's do, do, do a quick tour of these three articles. First of all, before you go do your discovery interview, this is a really helpful one. 11 suggestions to get your team ready. So take a look at side one of the discovery interview quick start card. It's always good to refresh everybody. Now, I bet you guys aren't going out and doing any physical interviews. If anybody is, let us know. But right now, it seems like everybody's doing virtual. So you don't have to take your small digital projector with you. But when you are ready for it, we have our favorite model in here that you can find. So check that out when you're ready to start going on the road again, okay? Now, this is really important. If you're taking your sales rep with you, or they're meeting you there, and they haven't been through this discovery training, make sure you send them out to Blueprinting for Sales so they can get up to speed. Otherwise, we're going to start selling in the middle of your interview. Anybody ever have that happen? I have. <laughs> yeah. it, does, it does not help, I can tell you that. No, it doesn't. You told the customer you weren't going to sell, and all of a sudden, your sales rep selling. Like, oh, darn. Okay. Now, if you're going to take a tour, uh, make sure you download the Amuse Customer Tour Checklist. Just go right here. We got, we got this all in here for you. Go to Blueprinting Center, Blue Tools, and then click on the thing with the tours. Okay. Number five, you do want to get a good list of current state questions. Uh, and you do this in Blueprinter Tool 2.3. Scott, when we go to the software, let's just remind them real quickly on this tool and the prep sheet before we go in. Okay. You bet. Okay. And then you'll get a lot of ideas on how to get good current state questions here. That's not our main topic today. Also, if you're going to use a trigger map, make sure you go into tool 2.3 and Take a look at circle. That, again, is not our main topic today. That's another day. Number seven, um, you do want to get your prep sheet filled out. And we'll take a real quick peek at that with you guys, okay? Now, I think it's really important to get to the meeting early. Just say, we want to get there early so we don't waste your people's time. And they're not going to say, oh, we'd rather have you waste our people's time. <laughs> so I get there early. Now, what if you're doing virtual? In our last Monday Masterclass, uh, was on virtual, uh, virtual VOC. So check that out. Um, maybe at the end, Scott, you can show them where they can download these things. But at yeah. um, any rate, um, check that out. But if you are going to have your customers in a conference room for a web conference, make sure you get it all set up early with your main contact. Ask them to join you 10, 15 minutes early. Okay. Do allow two hours of debriefing time before you head on the plane or go to your next meeting. Number 10, um, this is really important. Have side two of your discovery interview quick start card ready to go. And then I'm not gonna go into the details here, but if you have these special cases, take a look at these. If you're interviewing in a language other than English, check out this Blue Help article here. If you're interviewing at a trade show, we got another article on that one. Uh, if you're doing remote web conferences, which you probably are, we've got a nice Blue Help article on that one. And then we've got these other special cases. We hear this a lot. Hey, Dan or Scott, you know, I've been having all kinds of meetings with my customer. Isn't it awkward to say, we're going to do a discovery interview like we've never been talking to you before. So it's got some really cool tips on how you preload what you heard earlier into the sticky notes and show them that and then build on it. And then uh, the last one is, what if they want you to make a presentation? How do you handle that? Could I still do a discovery interview? So check out those. So anyway, that's the first section. Let me take a breath. Any questions? I'm going quickly, I know. But any questions on the final preparations before discovery interviews? Yeah, so again, we've muted everybody upon entry. But feel free to, to unmute yourself. Or if you're more comfortable with it, you can uh, drop a question in chat. But certainly feel free just to unmute. and. Uh, and chat with us. Yep. I will go back to the next article. Keep it moving here. The next article under how to conduct is tips for conducting each part. So again, we're not going to belabor this right now. You can spend more time on it. But as you get into here, I think you're going to find this really useful. 
If you go to your e-learning module number 15, and some of you know this well, you'll see seven short videos where Meg Wheaton and her team are doing it. That's really valuable to kind of give yourself a mental script if you don't have one already. Then we have some things on the setup that is really helpful to look at, some nice articles there for you as well. How to do the opening. Now, when you're doing the opening, here's where you want to bring up that discovery interview quick start card. So there's page one. Let's go to page two. Let's zoom in on here. So if I'm doing the opening, I'm going to be looking at this, talking about the purpose, why I'm using a projector, and what the agenda is all for. So that's kind of helpful, I think, to uh, have this in front of me. Now, if you're doing virtual VOC, it's even easier to have it in front of you. It's not bad to put it on a conference room table in a row meeting, but gosh, nobody can see it if I'm on a virtual. So check that one out for the opening. Current state, we've talked about this before. Maybe we'll have a, a, a Monday masterclass just on current state. But for now, remember, two or three questions are plenty. Keep it down to 10 or 15 minutes. You don't need to spend more than that. It's really about getting the customer comfortable. And you know, we got a whole Blue Help article on how to create and use current state questions. So for another day. Now, this is when you get into the real meat of the interview. It's the problems. Now, every now and then we hear our clients say that the word problems is off-putting, uh, especially in some other cultures. So if you want to change that to issues or challenges, Scott and I will show you how when we go to the software, okay? Just something you can think about. Here's another little tip that, uh, that we've come across fairly lately. If your ideas start drying up, you can say this, please, let's just take another two or three minutes and jot down any last problems you can think of, and then we'll collect them. That's a nice way to end up your yellow sticky notes. Here's another trick. If you go into a company where the culture is the boss, is the guy or the gal who's saying everything, you could start your interviews by saying, hey, everybody, take a few minutes, write down your maiden problems, and then we'll go around the room. So there's a little bit of variation there. Ideal state, we have a little different transition for that. Triggered ideas, you know, if you don't get to it, no worries, it's fine. You had a great meeting anyway. We'll talk more about the top picks. And when Scott and I take you over the software, we'll show you the, the voting method and the informal method of collecting these, okay? We'll cover that. And then we've got the closing here that we can also uh, uh, have. Just, and again, for all of these parts, as you're going into problems right here, say, well, you know, the rest of this meeting is about whatever is important to you. So take a look at these transitions as you get into this, okay? So that's the second article. We got one more before we are going to go to the uh, software and get into Scott and Dan's favorite tips. So let's go to that third article. The third article is avoiding beginner's errors. And these are easy things to fall into. So check out these nine errors before you get started. And uh, this is a, a big step on your way to panache is getting rid of these errors, okay? Number one, we hear it all the time. Uh, we spent too much time in current state. Number two, don't sell. If you detect a sales opportunity, wait till the end of the interview. And then at the end of the meeting say, hey, we heard some things we might be able to help you out with earlier. Is it okay if we think about it a little bit and contact you later? Don't sell there because they'll think that's why you set up the whole meeting. Don't solve. Now, if this is really hard for you, and it is for a lot of us, especially a bunch of engineers or chemists or stuff, you love to solve problems. So what you do is at the beginning of the interview, just say, hey, listen, today we don't want to sell or solve. We just want to listen to your needs. Now, of course, old habits die hard. So if we start, just say something, we'll stop. This gives you permission to remind each other. Oh, hey, Fred, we said no solving. Don't try to impress the customer with what you know. This happens a lot. They don't worry about how you look. They're not thinking about you. They're thinking about how they look. So just say to release yourself. We've got lots of preconceived notions of what we think you want, but that's not why we're here. It's all about you today. So if we ask a dumb question, it's just we don't want to make some assumptions. So try that one out. Um, 
only stop using the software projector or web conference if you absolutely have to. If there's any way of pulling this off, use it. I had a client once, their excuse for not using a digital projector was they said they went to a dairy farm and there wasn't any place. And I said, listen, guys, there have to be some big, white, slow moving cows you can project your, your notes on. So look for any opportunity you can to project your notes. Don't fall back into old style questionnaire probing with long questions. Keep them really short. Again, another fine article in Blue Health on how to probe. Uh, and then try to get one outcome per sticky note. We're going to show you one of our favorite tricks, which is if you find something else, you can move it to another sticky note. And then a really common one is not allowing enough time at the end of the interview for top picks and outcome statements. You want to get those top picks with the customer and you want to get the outcome statements with them. And we've got some good articles on that as well. And then finally, uh, this is the biggest recommend. If you, if you get everything else we covered today, this is the most important one. And that is, as you finish your discovery interviews, it's telling you want to go into a converging phase, prioritization, and say, and when they say, when you ask them, would you do it? They say, yes, say, great. Let's get our calendars out and schedule now. That'll really speed up your whole process. Okay, well, we're going to go to the fun part now. We're going to go to the fun part where Scott shares the screen, but let me just take a breath and say, is there, are there any questions on these three Blue Help articles before we go there? Everybody good so far? All right, Scott. Well, I will stop sharing. You can take over the controls. Now, Scott, why don't you back up to the client, to the AIM Blueprinting Center, and just make sure they know how we got here. I think most people do, but just to make sure everybody's good with this. So we're in the Blueprinting Center here. Click on the Blueprinting up above there. Um, and by the way, this home page is going to change in a while. We'll talk more about that, but you can see the blue tools, the blue help alls here. Now watch what happens when Scott clicks open Blueprinter 5.0. Now it'll open up. That's really how you want to open up your, your software. Now you're always going to have a demo Acme product, Acme packaging in here. You can go in and play with this thing and nothing breaks. Okay. It'll always stay the way it is because it's a demo. It's a permanent demo. So we're going into the demo Acme packaging. And our topic today is discovery. So we're going to click discovery interviews. And then we're going to go to 2.5. Now 2.1 is where you set up the interview. Oh, oh, Scott, I'm sorry. We did tell them, let's, let's hit 2.1 two, a second. Yeah, I have a note to look at 2.3 also. And 2. Point, yeah, exactly. So 2.1 is where you set these up. There's settings, we scroll down, and then we have the companies we want to interview down below here. And notice there's a prep sheet. So before your interview, you want to go in that prep sheet and you want to set up the topic, the time, your interview team over on the right, uh, the interviewees, those are your customers there, current state questions, and trigger maps. Now, Watch what happens when, when Scott clicks add or view current state questions there. Yeah, now this is the list he has pre-prepared with his team in 2.3. And we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now let's go back to the prep sheet. And now let's scroll down. You see that's what he was in current state questions. Now see where it says trigger map? He could click that and that's where he could pick from any trigger map. Now he's going to go back to the prep sheet. And so we even have handy dandy little 2.3 uh, orange things in here. So Scott could click 2.3 right now and it opens up the tool 2.3. This is where you create your current state questions for the whole project and your trigger maps for the whole project. That's another topic someday, but just to make sure it's clear for everybody. You create current state questions and trigger maps for your whole project in 2.3. You select the specific current state questions and trigger maps in your prep sheet for that interview, and then you use them during the interview. All right, now let's go to 2.5, Scott. And let's go down to Tesco. Tesco is a, is a demo uh, interview we put in. 
where we purposely didn't finish it. Now, here's a few of the things, and Scott, you jump in on yours as well, but the first thing is notice Scott's got his finger on the maximizer there. Go ahead and show them one more time, Scott. Um, that's really important. As soon as you are getting ready, open up the screen, have it really filled up. Now, watch what happens when Scott clicks the problems here. Now, this is an interview that's been finished for demo purposes, but that to me looks really good. It has about 12 sticky notes on it, it's readable. Now watch what happens if Scott clicks control minus several times. This is on your keyboard, control minus, any browser. Like that would be not a very good interview. <laughs> now when he clicks control plus a few times, watch what happens. And if it goes too many, keeps going, that's probably not real good either. So try to get it where you're seeing nine or 12 sticky notes. Make sure it's nice and readable by the customer. That just looks good right there. So the first thing is, this is before the customer is with you now, okay? You're getting all ready for this thing. Uh, now, when you are ready for the interview, uh, oh, also check to make sure that you've got the scope up there. You see that scope up there on, uh, uh, on e-commerce packaging? That was developed and put in your prep sheet. So we want that to be there. So this looks pretty good. Now Scott's gonna click discovery meeting. Okay, over in the upper left. Now, this is what your customers should see when the interview starts. You don't wanna see them bouncing around and playing with magnification and Zoom and all that. Just make it nice looking. Now, this is where you've got your, your discovery interview quick start card, you do introductions. You can click on Acme Packaging. That's the supplier team. And this is who you loaded in from your team so you can introduce the people. Now, if you're doing a, a virtual web conference, it's probably a good idea to have your webcams on and smiling faces and waving and all that. Now we go to Tesco and we introduce their people. And so if somebody, if somebody besides Jeff, Sue, and Candy came, Scott can click the plus sign and he can add it in here. By the way, in a little bit, we're gonna have a new executive dashboard. Make sure that if you go on an interview, you give yourself credit by marking yourself down as a moderator, note taker, and an observer. Because we're gonna be having some certification levels coming up in a few months, and the software will start keeping track of what you personally did. So make sure that you record yourself on the prep sheet if you were on a discovery interview. Little side note there. Okay, so now let's go to current state. And we didn't, this is one that hasn't been filled in, but it's pretty simple. You know, you ask a question, Scott can click in the type answers here. That's where he records your answers. Use normal probing here. Make sure that, you know, you, you listen well, do a little probing. You're really just getting them used to this whole thing, okay? Uh, you move on to the second note, do that. What if they bring up a topic that you didn't have? You could create another current state question. Just hit the plus sign and throw in another current state question and you're fine, okay? Also, if they spill over into the problems, and you don't want that to happen, there's a place down below where you can actually click and make these all sticky notes and you can convert them over. There's a little button down at the bottom there, maybe Scott, you can just show them that. Copy the sticky notes. We won't do that right now, but just so you know it's there. Okay. We got lots to cover yet. Now let's go to problems, okay? So a few things here to think about when you're working on these problems. If I'm, let's, let's click on sticky note number one just for a moment, Scott. If you're the moderator, you want to spend some time watching your note taker. Are they keeping up with this whole thing? If they're falling behind, this is when you want to slow the pace down a little bit, do a little recapping, Okay, so you're talking about, you know, these minimum lap share strings that must be met. Now help me under, you're slowing it down a little bit. You could even say, Scott, did you get that all okay? You can say to the customer, was there something we missed here? Did we, did we get everything okay? So be kind of aware of your note taker. And note taker, you can also say, hey, you know, I think I might have missed something or did I get that okay? So that's a really helpful thing. Now, if you're doing a virtual VOC, it gets even easier because the customer 
doesn't have anything to look at other than the screen with a note taker back at your home office. So they will help a lot more, okay? Now, if you're the note taker, everybody's a little different here. Sometimes people put a bunch of bullet points down, but what I find is they don't make as much sense later. I would rather see a narrative. And to the extent you can, try to get sentences and full phrases in here. I know it's hard, but take it just a few extra seconds and try to get the nouns and verbs and objects in there. Because later on, if you just have some words without the context, it does not make a lot of sense later. So that's something, if you're the note taker, kind of work on that. You could, here's how you know if you're doing a good job note taking. Give your notes to somebody after the interview who was not on there, have them read through it and say what wasn't clear. And when they say, well, I don't know what you meant by this. So I see the word, but I don't know. I understand the words, I don't understand the sentence, okay? That tells you you need to spread it out a little bit more. Now, another thing I see sometimes, the note taker is typing, the note taker think he or she's done, they click next and they go to the next one. I don't like that. Wait for the moderator to say, any other problems? And then you move. And Scott, you could maybe show them there's three ways of going, right? Yes. Let's, let's go down to note number 11 for a minute here, okay? So Scott's got three choices. You could click next, right? That's one, not bad, takes you there. He could now he could click X and X out of it. That's one keystroke. And now open it, that's another keystroke. But here's our favorite. Scott's in 11, he hits the tab key. Boom, he's there. So try to practice and get used. Look at this guy, he's on note number 17, whoa. So that is really, let's talk about panache, huh? <laughs> so get used to using that tab key and you can really fly through these things, okay? Um, okay, observer. We haven't talked about the observer much. Observer asks lots of questions. You're like a junior moderator, okay? However, if you're the moderator, let's say we're back on note number 11, okay? And you're the observer. I don't really want to hear the observer say, okay, what are the problems? I think that's the job of the moderator. I think the moderator's pro his role is to determine when to move on. So you as an observer, stay active within the note, but don't determine when to move on, nor do you do that if you're the note taker, okay? All right, so um, now let's talk about probing a little bit here. Uh, do you have your discovery interview quick start card handy, Scott? I, I don't. Why don't you go back to the client center? Let's go back there. All right. <clears throat> to the aim to the blueprinting center and we'll go grab that we're going to go to blue tools and when we get to blue tools and blueprinting we're going to click on conduct discovery uh interviews and tours the third one over whoops that's scheduling oh, sorry sorry <laughs> that's okay and then we're going to very top one because it's so darn important. You want to do the English version or are you feeling kind of, you know, brave? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the English. <laughs> we'll go with the English version. All right. Let's go ahead and get right in there. Let's click that guy and go there. Let's go down to uh, page two. We'll go on to uh, page two. Now let's go all the way to the bottom. This to me is, and let's hit the control plus a couple times. This to me is the single most important thing you can do if you wanna be really good at probing. So make sure you don't overlook this. Use what we call the what and why method, which we developed five or six years ago now. So if you're the moderator or the observer and they say, well, we're having problems with water resistance. That's when you wanna say, well, tell me when do you normally see this? Are there special places where you see this? When you say water damage, can you describe that for me a little bit more, okay? Then once you get to the what questions, well, help me out. Now, why is that a problem for you? What does that, what does that, how does that impact you? Your note taker's really busy. Now, this one's really, really cool. Now, before we move on to the next note, we're on note number 11. Before we go to note number 12, is there anything else we should know about this water resistance problem? And get that on there. Anything else? We got it? Okay, good. Now, what other problems on note number 12? You're the note taker, boom, you go to number 12. This is really important to practice this. This, uh, more than anything else, if you master this, 
will make you come across like an extremely polished uh, moderator. And to me, that can you describe this on the first left one and the anything else we should know are the universal ones that are the gifts that just keep giving. Okay, so we got that one. We'll let you go back to the um, back to the sticky notes. Now here's a really advanced trick. And by, by the way, guys, I know we're going fast, but we'll be done in a little bit. So if you have questions and comments, and by the way, if you have some of your favorite tricks we haven't talked about, then we're, we're game to hear those. So let's imagine we're, um, you know, we're on note number two for a minute, okay? We need greater resistance to water. Uh, now, there's this guy named Chris Voss, V-O-S-S. -S. He was the FBI hostage negotiator for years, highly successful. He wrote a book called uh, Never Split the Difference. Never Split the Difference. Wonderful, wonderful book. Why don't you put that in there too? Never Split the Difference by, uh, by Chris Voss. I'll uh, drop it in the chat. If I oh, can. even better, even better. Great, okay, cool. So here's what he would do. He would just repeat some of the customer's last words, you know? And so after the customer talked about greater resistance, he would just say, ah, oh, greater, greater water resistance then. And that was enough, you know? Yeah, 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 and they'd keep going. And if they said, yeah, that's right, and that's it, then they move on. So just repeating some of the customer's words were just very, very effective. You, the fewer words you use as the moderator, the better. If you hear yourself going, well, you know, we've been wondering about this because we ran into this too. And then we were wondering if maybe you thought this would be, so then we had this question like, oh, don't do that. You're better off going, can you describe that? Ah, oh, anything else then? Okay, oh, greater water resistance then, huh? Mm-hmm, uh-huh. That's all you need to do, man. And I'll just keep going. Okay, that's a great, those are important tips. Note taker. Did I get this okay? Are we covering it all right? Moderator, what if the customers go off course, you know? What if you say, any other problems? And the customer goes, yeah, my brother-in-law owes me a lot of money. <laughs> you can say, well, I'm sorry to hear about that. But now within that scope in the upper left about e-commerce packaging, can you think of anything else? So refer to that scope from time to time to bring them back in. Okay, now let's go to note number two. We need greater resistance to water responses. So we're going through, everything's looking good. And we notice, wait a minute, lubricants from conveying equipment, that's not really water resistant. So either myself or the observer or Scott says, hey, you mentioned lubricants from conveyor equipment. That's not really water. Is that another outcome you're facing? And they go, yeah. So when Scott highlighted that, highlight it one more time so you can see how easy it is, Scott. All he does is he just highlights the text he removes his hand and Hey Dan, I've lost your audio. I don't know if it's just me. There we go. For some reason it just stopped. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, it went out for a second, but it did go out, yeah. Yeah, there it goes. And so he clicked that and he moved to a new sticky note. So if you hear it breaking, uh, if you hear two outcomes and one sticky note, that's how you break those things apart, okay? Now, let's go back to the top a little bit. I, I think must-haves are something you wanna get as you go. Let's click on note number one. Now, if they say the glue joints must meet industry standards, when you hear must or have to have, this is a great time to ask them. Now, if we gave you everything else in the world other than, you know, these glue joints meeting industry standards, could you use our product? No. Well, then you know what, ma'am? That sounds like something we call a must have. So Scott will click the must have uh, button right there. And what this means is we know we absolutely have to do this. Now let's go ahead and hit tab a couple times. And when you hit tab twice, you'll be over on sticky note number three. Go ahead and do that. Yep, there we go. And you say, now you say fire standards must be met. Now, is that also a must have? And so they say, yes, you can click that. Notice when Scott did anything in that top box, it turned into all caps. Don't go to that top box until you're ready to create either a must have 
or a top pick. So always do your typing down in the lower box. That's a really important thing. We're gonna save that top box for things that are finished, either a finished must have, or as you'll see in a little bit, a finished top pick, okay? All right, very good. Now let's, let's, go to the, uh, let's go to the top picks now, Scott. So here we are, we have a small congenial group and we say to them, now which of these, you know, if we could snap our fingers, which five to 10 of these would you pick if you could have anything? And they go, ooh, ooh, somebody goes, number two. So Scott doesn't even open the note up. He just, well, you can. Okay, go ahead, Scott, and click top picks with the open note. You can do it both ways. He can hit TP there, and they go, ooh, note number four. If Scott needs to, he can open the note up. Um, yeah, go ahead and hit six and open the note up, Scott, if you would, so you can see the other way. And he can click top pick there, okay? If you can read the note pretty well, there's no reason to open it up, but they may want to see it. Let's go ahead and grab eight and 10 as well, okay? So we'll get eight and we'll get, uh, we'll get 10. So those are, now that's the way we do it normally. Uh, now Scott would click top picks over on the left. And now we would work on outcome statements, but don't start yet, Scott. Let's, let's go back, click triggered ideas so we can see everything. Let's undo the top picks now. And he just clicks those again and they undo them. Let's show everybody the voting method, okay? Now the voting method is if you've got a lot of people or you've got an overbearing boss and, and he's gonna override everybody and you wanna get, you wanna be more democratic. So here's what you say. Okay, folks, uh, take a look at these and write down the numbers of the nodes that you think are the ones that really need to be fixed. And I'll give you a few minutes. So you, you, you're quiet for a few minutes. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, good. How many people uh, voted for note number two? Raise your hands. One, two, three. Scott, we got five votes for number two. So he puts a five in there. How many of you voted for number four? Okay, we got four votes for number four. How many voted for number five? Oh, only one vote. How many voted for number six? We got five. How many voted for seven? We got three. How many voted for number eight? We got uh, six, we have a winner. Okay, that's good. Now, what do you do? Now you go up to the top of the board and you mouse over and it says sort sticky notes. So you say, yes, I wanna do that. Sounds like something I should want to do. So we click that and now it tells you what it's gonna do. It's gonna sort first by the MHs, then any TPs, we don't have any of those, then number of votes. So we click confirm. So we wanna make sure we don't forget our must-haves. But notice what it did. Note number three has six votes, number four has five, and so forth. So now you can say to the customer, well, let me ask you, you guys had a lot of votes on sticky notes three, four, five, and six. Should we go ahead and start off by marking those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Scott clicks a TP on note three, four, five, and six. Now, what about the rest of these? What would you guys like to see? Oh, we'd really like to see note number seven. So we click that, okay? Now we go ahead and we go over top picks on the left and now we've isolated these. Okay, so those are the two ways of getting to this. Now there's one more thing you can do that we hardly ever talk about in our workshops. This is a little bonus here. Let's go back one more time. What if they're having a hard time seeing what's in these sticky notes? Now you can open up the sticky notes and show them. You could click, that's one way. You could click on six per page. Why don't you show them the six per page? That can be a way of doing it. They can see it a little bit better. But here's another way that's really pretty cool. Click on full text down below. Now they can see everything. And so if one sticky note is really long, they see it all. But the nice thing about this is if it's a real short sticky note, you're not doing six per page and using up a lot of space. It's very efficient. And, and Scott can click on the A, the big A over on the right, and he can make the text larger if they can't see it. Uh, and then he can click on the, uh, the little A. So you could dial this in so they could see it. We're gonna do a little bit more work on the layout of this, but it's not bad even right now. All right, so those are some tricks on getting your top picks isolated, okay? Now, let's go back to uh, uh, the uh, 12 per page for a bit. 
and let's click the top picks. And this is where you want to get your outcome statements. So let's click on note number three and notice whatever is in the top line of the lower box is what's in the top part. Why is that? If we're in the 36 per page view, you can still read them all. Why don't you just show them the 36 per page just for a minute, Scott, so they can see. So if you're in this, you can still read them, but we're back in 12 per page. So, um, so now we click on that, and now we're gonna put an outcome statement. So what we're gonna, we'll test this with the customer. So Scott highlights the whole thing, starts typing, and then he can, he can put this in. Are you saying you wanna minimize the time to track the boxes? And, and kind of test that with the customer. So here's where you work with your customer. Scott, next time in our next Monday Masterclass, we're gonna focus on outcome statements and you are an absolute master at this. Any words you wanna say about this now before we leave the outcome statements? Yeah, you know, it's, um, so we wanna begin with the verb, usually minimize or maximize. Of the two, minimize really should be the one you use the most because an outcome statement, it's really gonna be about minimizing the errors, minimizing the things that were going wrong. You know, I was just, I was just work, fixing a grill yesterday and I was, and the paint right there on the label, it said, it said, it said reduces errors, drips and splotches or something, I forget. But I was just looking at this paint can and it really had these, air, <laughs> these outcome statements right on the can. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Minimize, try to go for a, perfe a perfect job to be done, as you say in your, in your book yeah, on this. I do. <laughs> so, so, then, so we'll cover these outcome statements. They're really, really important. Too much to cover just quickly like this. But we'll cover these at the next Monday Masterclass. So come back for that. We've got a lot to cover on that. And Scott will be leading a lot of that. Two more quick things, two more quick tips. And then we're going to turn over to see if you have any questions on anything, not just what we covered today, or any, any questions on this, or any favorite tricks that you like. Let's go back and click Triggered Ideas and go back to the main setting here, or problems, either one. What if you are um, worried about that word problems, and you'd like to change it to challenges? So Scott's going to go up to the settings. You see that little gear in the upper right there? He's going to click that. Then he's going to click language under settings. And that's going to, and he's going to click activate language converter. Now he can go over to problems, highlight that, and put in the word issues or challenges, whichever is easier for you to spell. <laughs> so anyway, so we got that. So that's one way of using the language converter. But the other one is look where it says English. He's going to click on that. And we're going to do this interview in Portuguese, I think, aren't we? We're going to go down to uh, Rio. We had a choice between Sao Paulo and Rio. We chose Rio. And now he's going to save this for the interview only. And then we go down. We X out of the settings. We, we, we click problemas. And everything on the left is something that looks familiar to the customer. Now, unfortunately, Scott and I don't know how to type Brazilian Portuguese, so you have to get somebody who can take notes in that language, but that's how you do that. One last thing. You can see below top picks, it says proximus etipas, which means next steps. <laughs> you know what, Scott, let's go back to the gear. <laughs> let's go back to uh, the language being in English here. Well, I'll certainly confuse myself if not the people joining us. Okay, great. And so one thing we don't talk about, but think about using the next steps at the end of your meeting. Let's say the next step is we're going to send you a copy of Discovery Notes. So we're going to put that in here, send customer a copy of Discovery Notes. And he's going to hit tab on this thing. And now the owner, let's make it Scott since he knows what he's doing with this thing or, or, or Jeff, well, Jeff do it. And then we put the timing. We're going to get it done in about maybe three days or something, okay? Then this is a great time to say, hey, this has been really helpful. We've got all these ideas from you and other industry experts. But boy, could we use some help prioritizing. Would you mind helping us later? Sure, we'll help. Great. Well, I'll tell you what. We call that a preference interview. Let's go ahead and put down the action. Uh, send invitation for preference interview. And, uh, you know, that's something, let's add action item here. Send invitation for preference interview. 
And that's something Dan will take. Of course, I'm not probably on the demo list of uh, attendees here, but we'll have, yeah, there we go. And let's pick a time. We're going to be ready in about two months. How are you guys looking for middle of August? Yeah, good, great. Well, we'll send you the invitation for that. So get this all set up right as you're going, and then you're going to dramatically increase the speed of your, uh, your whole interview process, okay? So those are our tips. <laughs> Scott, why don't you click back on uh, problemas, <laughs> and let's see. Do we have anybody who has some favorite tips of theirs or has some questions on any topic at all? I will, I'll be quiet for a little bit. And if you didn't want to speak up and unmute, unmute if you have a question or put it in the chat. That's okay, too. Any questions or observations? And Scott, while people are thinking about that, we are recording this and we're going to put this all out on the website. Um, I'll tell you what, do you want to just jump out to that website and then, hey, everybody, just jump in with a question when you get a chance. You bet. Hey, Dan. Dan. Oh, good. Yeah, Tom, please go ahead. Hey, um, I lost when your voice, uh, uh, when the mic went out there, could you repeat? Uh, that process of what you were doing? Describe. It, we can't, we, remind me, were we doing the voting at that point for top picks? What, what, when did I lose my voice there? I think you were you were taking a portion of a note to make a ah, new that's right. sticky that's note. Right. Perfect. Thank you. So let's go ahead and we'll click on, um, well, just grab any of these. Maybe, uh, yeah, any of these. So here, the Customers talk about recycled fiber contact uh, and virgin fiber. Uh, and then let's say that they have another. So they've been talking about recycle. And let's say this, this energy, let's say they start talking about our energy costs are really high, you know? So they kind of got off onto another outcome, okay? They were talking about getting as much recycle, but now they start talking about energy costs. And you think that that is a separate outcome. And she say, now, is this a separate outcome about your energy costs? And yeah, yeah, it really is. Now Scott highlights that. And when he releases his finger from the mouse, he doesn't do anything else, that little pop-up menu comes. And then he clicks move to next empty note. Okay. And yeah. now if we scroll down to note, um, yeah, there we go. We put it right in there. Thanks, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's panache, huh? <laughs> yep, that is. <laughs> Other questions on uh, anything? All right. Scott, while people are thinking a little bit, let's just migrate over to, or I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. If you, if you, oh, you're there. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. You, 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 got, you beat me to it. You go ahead and share your screen. That's fine. And I put um, the link in the chat also. And it will all, the link will also be in a follow up email. So, well, perfect. We'll Perfect. Wait, you have this link. Yeah. Yeah. So here's where you can go. Scott will immediately after this session, he'll he'll probably remove the June 22nd one here, and the top one will be July 13th, the master of the outcome during these. And uh, this is when you can see what's coming up. We're going to get uh, the July 27th is going to be really fun. We talk about one and why quite a bit, but we have not told you guys about the salt method. That's a very advanced method. So that's going to be coming up July 27th. Now, let's scroll back up here a little bit. And um, you can look at upcoming and past classes here as well. Now, this um, website we're looking at right now, Scott sent you the link. We're actually going to make this uh, on our public website too, aren't we, Scott? It's going to be uh, maybe go to the AIM Institute and we can yeah. show them where it's going to be. But then. Yeah. Maybe a week or two, we'll have it. So if you forget how to find the past Monday master classes in the future, what did we decide, Scott? Was it going to be under training? I was I was uh, curious because I couldn't remember. So. I think I think Wait. it's under blueprinting tra training. Blueprinting Probably. training. Yeah. We're going to get rid of advanced skills. We don't do that anymore. We're instead doing blue belt only, uh, and then we're going to put Monday master classes. So we'll let you know. But the point I want to make is 
if you see a topic and you have a conflict with another meeting, you can always, you'll be able to go here and look at some of the past ones. Or let's say you've got a colleague and you think it'd be helpful for them to review the last one, the past classes, you know, as virtual VOC, you could send them there. So we'll keep you posted on how we're doing all this as we go, okay? And any of your, of your colleagues that have been through the program want to sign up and join us, you just they sign up right here. They'll start getting the meeting notices just like uh, all of you did. And then maybe the last thing while we're here on the website, anyway, let's go back to our main website. Just go up there, go to training and go to blueprinting training again. And let's go to the open virtual. So if you guys have some, it used to be really hard. We'd go and we'd do an in-person workshop and it's a big deal. And then of course they'd, you'd hire somebody the next month and you go, oh man, I wish they were here. Well, now we're going to keep these virtual workshops going. So you can see we have one in July and one in August. So if you've got some compadres who need to catch up, it's like 395 bucks for the two half days. So it's pretty easy to get your colleagues caught up anymore. Hey, All right. We've got a question in chat and it's, um, it's probably too, it's an excellent question. Some of my favorite questions uh, It's probably not one we can handle well uh, in nine minutes. So the question is, uh, can you comment on this? And Dan knows I have a lot of passion for this topic. Can you comment on the scope statement? How not to be too narrow or too broad? Dan, this might be, I know we'll address it briefly, but this might be a good topic for a future masterclass. Let's make a note on that. Let's absolutely do that. So, yeah. so here, when I think about the scope, here's a couple things that help me. First of all, I have to have a certain market segment in, in mind, a cluster of customers and they usually are competing with each other. So that's one thing. You don't want to go out and talk to people who are doing wildly different things. So think about your target audience, your market segment, okay? That's the first thing. Then the next thing I like to think about is what is their job to be done? So if I make hydraulic cylinders uh, and I want to talk to people who are making front end loaders, um, and then I want to think about their job to be done. Is it the filtration? Is it uh, of the, you know, the lubricants, uh, fluids on the front loader? Is it, it might be motion control, okay? Might be fluid control. Think about the jobs we've done. Don't say, I want to talk to you about your actuators or your hydraulic cylinders. I want to talk to you about motion control on front end loaders, okay? So I think we will cover this in more detail, but think about the market segments. You've got a very clear picture of the people you're talking to and then think about their job to be done. You don't want to say, I want to go talk to people making EV, electric vehicles, period, because now it's, what's their job to be done? Is it the braking system? Is it the, is it the dashboard? Is, you know, what's the job to be done? Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, get that scope narrowed down and, and get it to a point where it's pretty crisp. Make sure it's clear at the top of the interview, put it in your prep sheet. When in doubt, start a little bit broader uh, and, and, and instead of making it too narrow. Because if you start a little broader with your first two or three interviews, you can see where the energy is. And then if you need to, you can narrow that scope down. If you start too narrow, I want to talk to you about motion control of this unit off the back end of the front end loader. You know, maybe that's too narrow. Maybe they want to talk about a different part of it, okay? If it's too narrow, you can't broaden it. If it's too broad, you can always narrow it in subsequent interviews. The last thing I'll say about scope is when you're in the interview, what if they give you something outside the scope? I like to be polite, ask a few probing questions, and not only be polite, maybe there's something really cool about this that I need to know. But it doesn't mean I need to probe to the same level for things out of scope that are in scope. So if I get something in scope that I'm really interested in, I'm going to spend more time probing. So I don't know if that, if that helps if there's some follow-up questions, but those are a few things to think about there. Yep. And then Scott, go ahead. You got some thoughts here too. Yeah, great thoughts. I think I, I like to say that I think there are two things if they're done really well, you're just really going to have, it's almost impossible not to have a great project. One, it's exactly the nature of this question. You got to have the project scope well. And the next one, are uh, well-written outcome statements. I did write w um, a blog post on this particular topic of, um, of, um, of determining the scope. 
Uh, the blog is called Elevate Your Success, New Product Blueprinting in Step 1. I will send this, uh, a link to this out with the follow-up uh, from today's session. And I'll put, it in the, I'll put it in the chat right now just for the fun of it. Great. Good. Good question. Any other questions or observations? Well, you guys have consumed an hour of your Monday morning, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for spending the time with us on this. We'll have the recording posted so you can use it or tell others. Uh, as Scott said, probably one of the two most important things is that are those outcome statements. So join us. It'll be three weeks. What do we say, Scott? July 13th, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, July, thir July 13th, yes. July 13th. We'll be back here. Bring your friends. Uh -huh. If you have any questions in the meantime, you know where Scott and I live. Just drop us an email, okay? All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful Monday, and thanks again for joining us. Bye-bye now. <laughs>